Hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to today. We're going to talk about probability. We're in the packet, pages three forty-eight through three fifty. So we're going to do three pages. We're going to start out just with a quick um, experiment where we roll two dice, um, and I'm going to use some probability terms and try to follow along the best you can. On the next page, we're going to uh, actually define a bunch of these probability terms. Suppose you roll, the two dice are rolled, a black one and a white one. Now I'm going to put these in the colors, and instead of white, I'm going to use red because I don't have a white pen, and it's going to be easier to see this if that's in red, okay? So suppose two dice are rolled, one black and one red. Here are the following outcomes. So on your first die, you could get a one. Okay, and I'm going to say first die, you get a one, 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 two, three, four, five, six. And the reason I'm doing that, because you get a one on the first die, and then a one on the second die. You get a one on the first die, a two on the second die, one on the, I'll say the black die, and a three on the red die, one on the black die, four on the red die, one on the black die, five on the red die, one on the black die, and six on the red die. So that's the six ways you can get a one on the black die, okay? That accounts for all the different ways you can get any of the different one through six on the red die. Okay, so now we're going to look if your first die was it first roll, your black die was a two. And if you get a two on the black die, you've got six different things that could happen on the red die. Get a one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I know this is going to take a moment to do, but this is worthwhile. We're going to use this quite a bit. And it's neat to draw out all the possible outcomes and understand the logic of why I, I'm setting them up this way. And if you, uh, one, two, oops, that should be a three, and then a four, and then a five, and then a six, okay? And then, because then you can see exactly how many outcomes there are. And organizing them in this way can help us to make sure that we don't miss any. Get a five on the black die. That five can go with any of the numbers one through six on the red die. Remember, you're, you're tossing two dice, a black die and a red die. And we're almost done. Six, 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 six. Get a six on the black die. You could either get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six on the red die. Okay, so there's our total number of outcomes. Okay, so how many are there? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So a total of 36 outcomes. Okay, we're going to see these, these are 36 equally likely outcomes. Okay. It's no more likely that you're going to get a one on the black die, six on the red die, as getting a six on the black die and a four on the red die. Okay, equally likely outcomes. Now, find the probability of each of the following events. What is the probability that your total on the two die, the two dice that you roll, is an eight? Well, this total is three. This total is th oh, I'm sorry. This total is two. This total is three, four, five, six, seven. We need eight. Let's take a look. Um, here's an eight, two and six. And the way these are organized, you can see, well, if this goes up by one, this needs to go down by one to add up to eight. So there, 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 and there. So one, two, three, four, five. Five of these outcomes have a sum of eight. Okay. So the probability is going to be five outcomes out of the total of 36 outcomes. Okay, so that's your probability. That's the likelihood that you get a total of eight. Okay, that the total is at least eight. So that means eight or more. So that means one, two, three, four, five. Notice the way that these are organized. All these outcomes down here, notice these are all nines, a total of nine, total of 10, total of 11, and total of 12. So at least eight means eight or more. So we could do one, two, three, four, five, 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that would be 15 out of 36 would be the probability that you get at least 8. Now what's the probability that you get less than 8? Well, here's our, this is exactly 8. All these up here, these add up to 7 and so on and less, okay? So less than 8, we could just subtract from 36, but just to be careful, let's count them up. Less than 8 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 out of 36, okay? And if we subtracted 15 from 36, we would get 21. Okay, so that makes sense. Zoom out just a touch so you can see this. The total is at most eight. At most eight means you could get eight or less than eight. So here's the boundary where we get exactly eight. So we'd want to take these, and we said there were 21 where we got less than eight, and then we'd add one, two, three, four, five, add the other five. So 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. At most eight would be 26 out of 36, and that one we would want to reduce to 13 out of 18. Right, the total is exactly 6. Let's look at where we get a total of exactly 6. 6 could be a 5 and a 1, 4 and a 2, 3 and a 3, 4 and a 2, or a 5 and a 1. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's 5 out of 36. The total is 11. The most you can get is 12. 11 means a 6 and a 5. Either a 5 on the black die, 6 on the red die, or a 6 on the black die, 5 on the red die. So that's going to be 2 out of 36, which is 1 out of 18. And the total is between 6 and 11, inclusive, which means you could get that includes a total of 6 and a total of 11. So this means, inclusive means your total is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 11. Okay, so we want these two. Um, and then that would be a total of 11. These are the total of 10, total of 9, total of 8, total of 7, and total of 6. Okay, so we can add those up. So it really helps to be organized here. Let's just make this boundary here. There's our total of 6. Here's our total of 11. Everything in between these two lines is everything between 6 and 11. So we can count those up. Okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, so that's 25 out of 36. Okay, now it might be easier to count since there's fewer where you, you're not between 6 and 11, either bigger than 11 or less than 6. You could have just counted the ones that don't work. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and subtract those from 36, and it'll tell you how many are in between. 36 minus 11 would give you 25. So that works too. Okay. Now the total is between 6 and 11, not inclusive. Okay. So now we want to go not including the 6. So we're going to chop those off and chop these off. So now we just want in between these two inside lines. Okay. So we can count those out. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, so that would be 18 out of 36, which reduces to 1 over 2. Totals between 5 and 12 inclusive. Okay, 5 and 12 inclusive. So now we're going to include these, the 5s and the 12s. So that means the only ones we don't include are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 which gives us, we're not including those six, we are including everything down here. That's gonna be 36 minus those one, two, three, four, five, six. 
So that would give us 30 out of 36, sorry, between 5 and 11 inclusive. I'm sorry, 5 and 12 inclusive. So 30 out of 36, that reduces to 5 out of 6. Okay. The total is exactly 14. Is that possible? The greatest total is 12. So the probability that you get a total of 14 is 0. That means it is not, it is not possible. Okay. The numbers are a 1 and a 3. Okay. So that means it could be a black 1 and a red 3 or a red 1 and a black 3. Okay. So there's looks like there's two ways you can get this. Let's take a look. A 1 and a 3 or a 3 and a 1. Those are the only two ways you can get this. A 3 and a 1. So that's 2 out of 36, which is 1 out of 18. The black die is a 4 and the white die is a 6. Now notice that's different. That's not just saying you got a 4 and a 6. This is saying the 4 has to be on the black die and the 6 has to be on the white die. So the 4 on the black die, 6 on the white die, we made it red. So that's the only way this can happen. That's 1 out of 36. So we get a 1 out of 36. Okay. Finally, the black die is a 4 or the white die is a 6. The black die is a 4, okay, which could be any of these. Black die is a 4. Or the white die, again, remember we're doing red instead of white. I don't think that my white pen is going to show up, so I did red instead. So the black die is a 4, or, so they don't both have to happen, you just need one or the other. Or the red die is a 6. So here the red die is a 6. That's everything down here in the bottom row. Now notice there's one of these that is in both of those categories, okay? But that can only happen one way, so we don't want to count it twice, okay? We just want the number of these 36 outcomes where either the 4 is black or the 6 is red. So we'll count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's 11 out of 36, okay? Okay. Now we're going to have some talk about kind of generalizing when we have situations like this, but we can now refer back to this page when we do that. So let's go to the next page, which is going to be 349. Here's some uh, vocabulary about probability. Okay. So we've got a random experiment. Okay. Random experiment is, call it an experiment. I don't like you to use the word in here, but I'll just say a trial. I might need a little bit of space here, but a trial or observation. Trial or observation that has, um, that can be repeated under the same circumstances. Okay, a trial or observation that can be repeated under the same circumstances. Okay, um, for instance, tossing of a coin. Okay, you know there's only two outcomes. You either get a heads or a tails. Okay, or the one that we just did here, rolling a die. Another example, rolling a single die. I'll say just a single die because what we did on the previous page, we rolled a pair of dice. But rolling a single die, your outcomes, you get a one, two, three, four, five, or a six. Okay, so those are just random experiments. It doesn't have to be anything major. It just means basically what you've done is you've done something that can be repeated under the same circumstances. Every time you roll a die, you still are going to get one of these six things. And each of these six outcomes are equally likely. So let's talk about what an outcome is. Okay, An outcome is de defined as equally likely uh, 
um, equally likely results of a random experiment. Okay, so if we look at this one, where our experiment was that we rolled two dice, two dice are rolled. That is our experiment. That is our random experiment. Okay. So an outcome is not saying, oh, I got between a total of 5 and 11. That's not a random experiment. That's not an outcome. Those are sp specific sets of outcomes. The outcomes are these 36 outcomes that are all equally likely. Okay. Count them up. Each one of these 36 outcomes are equally likely. These are your 36 outcomes, and they have to be equally likely. Okay. Now, an event, on the other hand, is a specific set of outcomes. Okay, so an event is a subset of these 36 equally likely outcomes. The event could be something that, okay, what's the event that I get a total of six? That was one of the first things we did. That's a specific event. It's a specific subset of these outcomes, okay? So it could be, for example, the total of two dice is six. Okay, that's a specific set of, um, of outcomes. Now, equally likely, what the heck does that mean? Well, it just means each outcome of an experiment occurs with equal probability. Okay. Equally likely means that the probability of each of those outcomes happening is the same. And your sample set is the set of all possible outcomes. Okay, for instance, here is our sample space. There are 36 outcomes in our sample space. Okay, if we were to just roll one die, if you're rolling one die, there are six outcomes in your sample space. If your experiment was tossing a coin, there are two outcomes in your sample space. Your sample space is the set of all possible outcomes of any experiment, okay? Now, the probability um, of an outcome happening is, let's say it's the long-term frequency of that outcome or of a particular outcome. That was terrible. Of a particular outcome. Okay. Erase that. Okay. More specifically, oh, I'll give you some examples. Probabilities. are always between 0 and 1, okay? And if your probability of some event A happening is 0, okay, then A is not possible to happen, okay? It means that A can never happen. If the probability of A is zero, then it means A never happens. Let's just put this as kind of like an aside in a bubble, okay? 
if the probability of event A is equal to 1, then it means A always happens. And most of the time, something doesn't either never happen or always happen. And that, that's when your probability is somewhere between 0 and 1. Okay. Now let's look at this example or this experiment. A card is drawn from a 52-card deck. Okay, hopefully we're familiar with uh, cards, a 52 deck of cards. Maybe what I'll do here. Um, in case you don't know this, you can fast forward through this if you're familiar with this. But when there's a deck of cards, there are 52 cards, okay? And you have an ace, a two, a three, a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten a jack, a queen, and a king, okay? These are people, these are face cards. And then there are four suits. So there's clubs. There are spades. There are hearts. And there are diamonds. Okay. So there's an ace of clubs, a two of clubs, a three of clubs, a four of clubs, and so on. Jack of clubs, queen of clubs, king of clubs. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jack, queen, king. Okay. Those are the black cards. Okay. So these are total of 26 black cards and then there's 26 red cards okay let's do a little key down here that's diamonds. Hearts. Clubs. And spades. Okay. So this we can use as reference when we need cards. And notice there are all the same ace through king of each of these suits. These are called suits. Um, let's just put this down here. These are your four suits. Okay. Now let's start answering our questions. Maybe back up a little bit and you can see. So our first question, a card is drawn from these 52 cards. What is the size of the sample space? Well, the size of the sample space, you're grabbing one card. It is equally likely that you get, let's say, the seven of hearts as it is that you get the jack of clubs. Okay. Sample space, how many? There are 52 in the sample space. How many outcomes are in the event the card has a number on it? Okay. Now notice which ones have numbers on it. The ace doesn't have a number. It counts as one point, but it doesn't have a number. It has an A on it, which is a letter. These are letters over here. So we're looking at the amount that have numbers on them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine cards in each suit have a number on them. So we would take nine, nine more, nine more, nine more. Nine times four is 36. So how many outcomes? There are 36 outcomes that have a number on them. Okay. Um, now calculate the probability that the card is a five. Okay. Well, there's one, two, three, four. Four cards have a five out of 52. Probability card has a five is four out of 52, or we could reduce that to one out of 13. Okay. Um, now we're talking probability again, and I just glossed over this. So let's talk about this for a second. General notation for probability. 
This is actually your formal definition of probability. We said it's long-term frequency. This is more specific, okay? The probability of, of an event, that's how you say this, that's the probability of an event, and you write it as P parenthesis E equals, I'm going to write it here, the probability of an event P of E is equal to the number of outcomes in the event divided by the number of outcomes in the sample space. Okay, and as you can see, this is just writing out this in words. The probability of an event happening is the number, and is for number of outcomes in the event, divided by the number of outcomes in the sample space. So we kind of did this naturally um, when we were doing this. When we said, what's the probability you get exactly six? Well, we counted up the number of ways you can get exactly six. That was the number of outcomes in the event, the event meaning that we got a six, over the number of outcomes in the entire sample space. So the number of ways you can get a six, which was five, divided by the number of outcomes in the sample space, which was 36. Okay, so that's how we got a five out of 36, and that was this one right here, down here. Okay, so um, here we've got a different experiment. We're looking at 52 cards in a deck. Okay, let's go back to the probability that the card is a five or a six. So you can either get a five or a six. So now we're looking at these are the outcomes in our event. So there's eight, eight outcomes out of out of 52. A five or a six, we get eight out of 52, which reduces to two out of 13. Okay. Oops. Five or a six. There were eight of them that were five or sixes out of 52. Okay, reduces to two out of... 13. Now the probability of the card is between but not including a 5 and a 10. Between but not including a 5 and a 10. So here's your 5s, here's your 10s. We don't want to include those. We want in between 5 and 10. How many cards are in between a 5 and 10, not including 5, not including 10? We've got 4 times 4, that's 16 cards out of 52. Okay. So that's going to be 16 out of 52, which reduces to 4 out of 13. Okay. The card is the 7 of clubs. Okay. So here's your 7 of clubs. There's only one. So that's just going to be 1 out of 52. Okay. The card is a spade. What is your probability that your card is a spade? Well, Here's your spades. There are 13. There's 26 black cards. And then here there's 26 red cards. Which means, splitting each of those in half, there are 13 clubs. There are 13 spades. There are 13 hearts and 13 diamonds. Okay? So what is the probability that the card is a spade? Well, there are 13 spades out of 52. Okay? So we get 13 divided by 52, or you can kind of see that's one out of four, okay? Card has to be one of the four suits. So if you've narrowed it down, it's gotta be one of these, that's one out of four, okay? The card is the ace of hearts or a diamond. Wait, let's see. The probability that the card is the ace of hearts or diamonds. Um, actually, I think that's a little bit misleading. Is it saying the ace of hearts or the ace of diamonds? I don't think it says that is the ace of hearts or it is a diamond. Let's just assume it says it that way. This is a little misleading on a test. I will not word it this way, okay? Probably is the ace of hearts or it's a diamond. So ace of hearts is this one or it's a diamond, which is any one of these 13 cards, okay? So that means it's either an ace of hearts or it's a diamonds. So that's 13 plus one more, 14. That's gonna be 14 out of 52, and we can reduce that to 7 out of 26, okay? Now let's do this one down here, and this we can use what we did on the other page, and that's kind of why I was thinking ahead 
and I decided to do um, one black and one red. Okay, you throw a pair of dice, one red, the other black. Okay, nice thing is we don't have to draw these out again. We've got these here. What is the possible outcome? What are the possible outcomes in the sample space? Okay, these are the possible outcomes in the sample space. We don't need to write them again. I'm just going to say on previous page. Okay, calculate the probability you get a red five and a black six. A red five, so the red fives are this row, and a black six, that's this one. Probability that that happens is one out of your 36 outcomes. That's one out of 36. Probability of the sum is at least three. At least three, which means three or more. Okay, we can kind of continue this three or more, well, that's everything except for this one. So that's 35 out of the 36. Okay. Probability of the sum is at most three. At most three means you can have three or less. So that's one, two, three. Three out of the 36. Okay, so that's three out of 36. We can reduce that to one out of 12. Probability of the sum is between 3 and 11, inclusive, 3 and 11, in between 3 and 11, inclusive. So we're going to go from 3 up to 11, including the 3s, including the 11s. Okay, that's everything in here. The only ones that don't work are this 2 and this 12. So that's going to be 34 out of 36. Which is 17 out of 18. The sum is exactly 14. Well, that's zero. Okay. Um, the red die is a four. Oh, did, we already did these questions, didn't we? Okay. So I think we did. The red die is a six. Okay. So we already did these. These are on the previous page. Let's go to the last page, 350. Okay. And we're going to talk about two counting principles. We're going to look at some examples. Okay. A pizza shop offers a special price on a two-topping pizza. Okay, you can choose one topping from each of the following groups. You get to pick either provolone cheese or extra mozzarella. Um, and then on top of that, you get to pick one of these three. Okay, it's a two topping pizza. You can pick a cheese and you can pick a topping, a meat topping. Okay, begin a tree diagram with the two ch cheese choices in, this, in the space above. So we either get the provolone or we get the mozzarella. Okay, now we can get provolone with any of these three toppings, the pepperoni, the sausage, and the ham. Okay, or we could then get the matzo with each of those three, pepperoni, sausage, ham. Okay. From each cheese choice, extend a line for each of the meat choices. Okay, I already did that. From each cheese, you're sending a line. So there are a total of how many possible combinations? Well, you could have provolone pepperoni, provolone sausage, provolone ham. You have mozzarella with pepperoni, mozzarella sausage, mozzarella with ham. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, six different options. Okay, six outcomes. The special included a third topping of either onions or green peppers. How would you extend your diagram to show the additional possibilities? Okay, so each one of these choices, let's say this one represents provolone pepperoni. Well, then provolone pepperoni and onions, provolone pepperoni and green peppers. And we could do the same thing here. I'll just do onion, green pepper, onion, green pepper, onion green pepper, okay? So each one of these six options, now we have two more choices for. So we could count them up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, or we could see we had six, and now we're either adding onion or green pepper, so that's gonna double our options of six, and that's gonna give us 12. Or the way you can think about it, think about this. You've got two toppings here, but that two gets multiplied by three because there's three of these. So one, two, three. And then that gets doubled because there's two choices here. So we really did a two times a three times a two. 
okay? And that's our counting principle. Okay, how many three topping pizzas? Well, we got 12. Uh, okay, so this was 12. How many additional possibilities? Well, there were six more additional possibilities because we had six there and now there's 12. Okay, so we'll just say there's 12 total. That's the important part. A fundamental counting principle number one is there are m ways that one event can occur and n ways that another event can occur, then there are m times n ways that both can occur. Okay, but the number of ways you can get a and then b is the number of ways you can get a times the number of ways you can get b. Okay, so the number of ways that you could get a cheese, a meat, and a vegetable is going to be the number of ways you could get meat or you could get cheese times the number of ways you get meat times the number of ways you can get a vegetable. Okay, so two times three times two. Okay, let's look at the next counting principle. How many different uh, possible combinations are possible if you choose, choose a, a cheese or a meat topping? Let's say you don't get one of each. Okay, you've got... You can either get cheese or you can get a meat. I don't know how good your pizza would be with just pepperoni and no cheese, but if they're saying you get to pick one from this category and one from this category, I'm sorry, or one from this category, you get a total of one choice out of those total of five things. Well, we would just have five choices. There's not really a tree diagram. You're just getting provolone or mozzarella or pepperoni, or sausage, or ham. You don't get one of these and one of these. You get one of these or one of these. Okay, so you get five different ways that you could get, um, pick a topping. I'm sorry, I can't see that. Okay, so if you're saying a cheese or a meat, here's your cheeses. You get one of those or you get one of these, okay? Which means you have one choice out of five things. So you're counting principle number two. If there are m ways that one event can occur or n ways another can occur, so you basically get one of these or one of these, then there are a total of five ways that um, what, either event can occur. So that's the number of ways A or B happens is the number of ways A can happen plus the number of ways B happens. Okay. So if both are happening, you multiply. If it's one of the other, you're adding them. Okay. And that's all for now. I think that's good for today. Um, and then uh, I want you to try that delta math assignment, 12-3. All right? I will see you all soon. Thank you for watching.